Quite a few of you have been after me to uh, do a video on carving a horse. Well, that's what we're going to do right now. And uh, it's probably going to be a fairly long one, like some of the others, because uh, I'll take my time with it and really get into it so you can see everything that I do to turn something out like this. Now this horse here, if you go back through the blog over there on the right hand side and look down through that list and find horses and click on that, you'll find the photographic series we did on carving this horse here. It shows how I did this whole horse except for the stirrups. And also associated with that post, if you look in the gallery, there's all kinds of photographs and uh, reference material on doing this horse. Uh, I did this thing a long time ago. It's been sitting around on my workbench, I guess for a purpose, because now it's, it's a good example of uh, what we're going to do. Okay? So, let me set this thing aside for a moment. The first thing we have to do is, I'd suggest getting you some reference material. Now this book here, I bought several years ago, and uh, I use it quite often when I'm doing animals. It's a good, good book for, for the horses and the other kinds of animals. It shows you their profiles, and, uh, muscle structure, skeletal structure. It breaks it down pretty good. And it shows you, the, it really goes into detail on the various parts of the horse, like the hoof. just a good book to have around. And there's some other uh, other animals in here too, cows and other things. You probably won't use all the other animals, but if you want to call horses, horses, this is a good book to have. Okay? So, here's my horse file. You can see there's a, this is just a pattern file here. There's a lot of stuff in here. So let's just go through here and find that pattern of the horse that we want to do. You can see I skipped out these things and just file them away. Never know when you're gonna when you're gonna need them again. There's horses of all different shapes and sizes in here. Somewhere in here is the pattern that I'm looking for. Where are you? Is that it? Is it? Now I had it in here. I think it's this one right here. And yep, that's the one. Okay, this is the one we're going to use. Let me get this out of here. Now, this one is somewhat different than this one here, as you can see by the shape of the head and the shape of the body. This one here was meant to have a cowboy setting on him, but uh, I changed my mind and went ahead and put stirrups on him, so we can't do that anymore. But anyway, this will be the one that we're going to do. It's basically the same size as that one there, but if this one's going to be a little more gangly looking. I think you'll enjoy the, doing this one here. So, the first step of doing this is to lay it out on the wooden block. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, we've got our pattern here. Got me a piece of uh, carbon paper. And I'm going to use two pieces of this good Heineke basswood. And these pieces are just shy of one inch thick. Okay, I'm going to need a carpenter square. And this piece cost a dollar eighty-five cents. So for three dollars and something, we're going to turn us out a good horse. So the first thing I did was I went and I laid out the body on my block here. See this line right here? That's going to be the join line where the head meets the body. So that's where we're going to cut this off, and we're not going to worry about the tail nor are we going to worry about the stirrups. We're going to worry about that stuff later on, okay? So anyway, I laid it out on my block. Now, to uh, match these two pieces up, 
And let me tell you a minute why we're using two pieces. By using two pieces, once we cut out this blank, this is going to allow us to separate them and work on the legs in and out, inside and outside, without any difficulty of coming up against the legs on the opposite side of the horse. Some people might think this is cheating. I don't care. I like to do it this way. It saves me all kinds of time and it's easier and you turn out a better horse. So anyway, draw it on there. I've laid these two little points out in the thickest part of the horse on the body. Okay, this is where I'm going to drill a couple little holes to dowel this piece together, to hold it together as I cut it out. All right. So I did that on this piece, and then using my carpenter square, this is how I match it up on the other side. Just take a pencil, draw your line straight across. That'll give you the horizontal line for your two uh, two holes. Match it up this way. Might need a ruler. Or I guess you can even do it right here. Go ahead and uh, draw your other two lines for your, so you come up straight. Just set that on there. Make a mark where those lines come. And then draw them there. And that'll show you the two registry points of where you want those holes, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my drill and I'm only going to drill in here just a little bit. That's all I have to drill in there to set these two points. So I'm going to drill one right here. Again, just a little bit. You don't need a lot. graphite pencil that I use all the time for making these holes. It's just a sketching pencil I bought down at the art shop. Stick that in there, kind of twist it around a little bit. Now we're going to match these two pieces up like that. Turn it over. bang on it a bit, hopefully that'll be enough. And looky there, there are two holes right there. So I want to drill one right there, and I want to drill one right there. It won't matter if you get it off just a little bit. If you're using a dull drill like I have, it's going to be off a little bit. a dowel. I'm going to cut off just a couple little bitty pieces. Don't have to be very big. About like that will do fine. And I'm going to put one here. Come on, get in there. There. See, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we're off just a bit there, but that don't matter. It won't matter at all. So, now our pieces are held firmly together. We can take it over to the saw and cut out both pieces at the same time to give us a good blank to start with, okay? And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, now if you look at this silhouette before we start 
cutting it out, you'll notice that both hind feet are on here. Well, we're going to cut one of these hind feet off. Actually, we're going to cut two hind feet off after we get the main blank cut out. But right now, what we want to do is we want to cut out this blank with all these feet on there. In other words, do not cut through that area right there. Okay? That's very important. Don't do that. We'll do it later, but don't do it now. So let's go ahead and cut this thing out. Okay, I'm going to take off this top first. I don't think you need to watch me cut out this whole thing, but once once I get down around this area, I'll show you how I'm doing that, okay? Okay, we got the horse all cut out except for this little area right here. So now we're going to do that. So. Notice I always stay outside the lines. Don't cut on the line. That line is your sketch. You don't want to cut on that. Okay, there's our blank, all right? And like I say, now it's in two pieces, so they come right apart. Now, what we have to do is we have to, well, first of all, let's go back over to the uh, workbench. I think you can see it better over there. Okay, before we cut these legs off, let's just discuss a minute which legs we want to cut off. Now, this is an old uh, little scene that I did years ago called Horses for Rent. Now, when you're doing your horse and you're thinking of a scene to put it in, I don't have anything against you using this scene here. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty well known for this scene. I've sold all kinds of these little scenes like this. So, please give me credit if you use this design. That's all I ask. Anyway, when you're setting your horse up in a scene like this, you want to make sure that you present it, your figure in the best possible position. Now if you see on this one here, see the outside leg is the one that comes straight down and the inside leg is the one that's caught, okay? Now had I done it just the opposite, put the outside leg behind the inside leg, it would have been all right, but it wouldn't look as good as it does here. So now if this horse was faced the opposite direction, we would do it just the opposite. This leg, the cocked leg, would be the one going straight down and the outside leg here would be the inside leg there, so it would be the one that's cocked. It just looks better that way. It's just more, you know, it's just a better composition. So before you cut your legs off, whoops, see this one here? Now you can look at this horse and you can tell how I'm going to position it. Okay? And the first thing you're going to say is, well, if I position him like this, with the outside leg straight, what I just told you a minute ago is totally reversed, right? You're right in a way. But notice something different on this horse. Notice his head is turned. And there's also going to be another figure in this composition. So I wasn't really worried about that so much here. 
So each time you do something, you have to, you know, th uh, think these things out. So when you when you put everything together in the end, it all works out to the best that it can be. Okay. So this one here, I'm going to probably redo this scene here. So I'm going to separate these two. So on this blank, I want to take off that leg. Okay? On this blank, I want to take off this leg. So I'm going to go ahead and draw through there like that. And now it's back over to the saw to take off those two legs. Think this thing out before you do it because you definitely don't want to end up with a blank with both legs cocked <laughs> or that horse is going to fall over. And if you end up with both legs straight, that's okay. But they definitely can't both be cocked, all right? So let's go back over to the saw and do some amputation. So here we go. I'm just double checking. I make mistakes too. Let's put him back together here. So there he is. Okay. Now we've got our blank. Now, you've got these two pieces right here. Don't throw these away. We're going to be using these in the next segment because I want to use one as a study guide to show you how to carve a nice looking hoof. Okay? Because that's the secret to this horse. The hardest thing carving this horse is carving these feet. All right? And, uh, I think by giving you a little separate lesson in carving a hoof and explaining, you know, as we go along of what uh, constitutes a horse's hoof and how important it is to the horse, hopefully you'll learn a lot because I sure did when, uh, when I had my horses and I carved a few feet, okay? So in the next segment, we're going to start carving this fella, all right?